Money and escape from Tarkov can sometimes be hard to come by. <gasps> That's all right, we've all been there before. However, I don't think you're ever gonna be broke and escape from Tarkov again. I figured out a way to make money consistently on a map that I think is very underutilized and very much so slept on. And that map is Ground Zero because I think it is foolproof. And here's why. So the map can only take PMCs that are level one to 20. However, if you are a scav, it doesn't matter what level you are. You can be level 60 and still scav on Ground Zero. And everyone knows that a scav's worst enemy is a PMC. So why not fight the ones that ain't got big sticks? Cocksucker! You see where I'm going with this? I'm gonna show you what routes to take and key areas to hit. And given that the area is just one big block, it makes zigzagging to all the rare item spawns, like finding a needle in a stack of needles. And stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna take the average of all 10 runs and prove to y'all that this is the best Better dollar down money making method in Escape from Tarkov. And subscribe, because if you don't, you're a piece of shit. Sorry, the mic cut out. You ain't gotta subscribe if you don't wanna. But if you don't subscribe, you're a yellow belly and so is your whole damn bloodline. Now come on, let's show you the loot run and I apologize for my outburst. Now there are many different spawn points. However, the most common ones are Emercom Checkpoint to the north and Nakatani Basement Stairs to the south, which is exactly where I spawned in this raid with only 25 minutes left to go. So let's see how much money we can make in 25 minutes. Now remember, our overall goal is to zigzag from building to building, starting from either the north or south side, depending on where you spawn, and working your way towards the opposite end, staying above ground, just hitting the big major areas. And another important thing, the bodies. There are a lot of civilians and people PMCs that are taking naps on this map. There are six in this general area right here marked on the map for you. I like to loot these guys before heading into our first building. Also, do not go past the vehicles for these two guys in particular. Sniper Scav will pop you in a heartbeat. Now see what I said about good gear? That's a nice rig. These guys have great stuff on them and I definitely don't think you should skip them when you're doing your loot runs. A nice little shroud mask that'll be worth a pretty penny to old raggy by the way this is not an offline raid this is a regular raid that i just scabbed into just to show you guys a more realistic version of what it's probably going to be like given that there could have been other players that have already come through and picked these guys but they didn't because they don't know how to loot eh? y'all starting to pick up why i like this place so much by the way, our next two PMCs are in this little vehicle right here. There's one in the driver's side and there's one in the passenger side, I believe, or vice versa. But the one in the passenger side, he's a little difficult to get to and I don't want to get popped. If you think it's worth the risk, go for it. We're now heading into Capital Insight, which is the first building that we go into when we spawn at Nakatani. There's stuff all on this front desk here. There spawns on these little waiting area tables. There's a little back room here that has food provisions, as Bill likes to call them, yum yums. After I'm done here, I pop out into the back hallway and check these back tables. And looky there, there's some sugar. That right there is going to fetch us about 100,000 beans on its own. And to think, it's just sitting back here all by its lonesome. From here, I'll head up the left entrance escalators and take the first door that's open on my right. This is the conference room. You can find food and gold chains on this table, as well as underneath the TV and on this sofa over here, and these two love seats. Leaving this room, I then go out the same way I came in, and I don't even bother looting the second story offices in this building. I've never found anything crazy in there, I just go on out. The next place I like to hit, I call Motor, for the big M on the side of the building and the fact that there's a car parked in here. There's normally one guy taking a nap with a cone on his head, aka Conehead. Be sure to say hello to him, he's a very, very kind gentleman. But the rest of the loot run goes like this. So I'm gonna put it at four times speed. And if you wanna see exactly where I go, you can see that with a little map that I'm gonna put up on the screen for you as well. So you know exactly where I'm going. Or if you don't give a hoot, you can skip to this timestamp in the video to see how much money we made on this run. And then I'll give you the average of all 10 runs that I did. And boy, let me tell you, it was a lot. This building right here that we've moved to is called Kiep Kurt. Anyways, it's like a tech building. There's a bunch of PCs in here, as well as this dead fella up here. And he gave me a little bird. Fun fact about Scovo, I love birds, especially the ones that talk. That is amazing to me. There's a weapon box right here. Weapon box here. And this one actually spawned armor, which I was gonna take, but it's only class four. And I didn't have much room because I needed these cigarettes for my task. There's also a double stack of filing cabinets in here. And when it comes to these weapon boxes, look around because they could be in the adjacent offices directly across 
from offices that I'm currently in right now. But you can't miss them. They're big black boxes. I'm now going to march up the stairs that connects you to Olive, which is a fancy building where they normally wouldn't let people like me in. But we're going to go anyway because we're rednecks and we do what we want. We piss in our front yard. It is okay. There can also be weapon boxes on the first floor and on the second floor, always right in this spot right here. Got us a yellow chocolate bar. That is an easy 50k. I wanted to go back normal speed right here because this is important. Bottles of vodka spawn on this bar right here and I see people leaving them there all the time. I found four bottles of vodka sitting on the first shelf before. It is insane how many people refuse to look at the bar. So please take a peep at it once you come down here. I'm begging you. Ooh, and I'm adding one more thing after going back and looking through the footage. With the newest update to Escape from Tarkov, they have essentially changed the way Ground Zero works. So I think there's now PMCs that can be above level 20 if you're above level 20. There's some type of skill-based matchmaking going on. Potentially, I'm not entirely sure. If any of you know what has happened with, I think it was 14.5 patch update for EFT in regards to Ground Zero, please put it in the comments down below. It'd be much appreciated, partner, and I'd tip my hat to you as well. Ooh, nuts and bolts are very common on this map. Nuts and bolts are going anywhere between 30 to 50K right now on Flea. I think the bolts are going for 50 to 60. So those one slot items are definitely worth grabbing. I'm starting to get low on time here. So I decided to skip the bank altogether. There's not too, too much in the bank. The upstairs portion is definitely worth hitting more than the bottom stairs portion. But to go upstairs takes a little while because there's that barbed wire in the way and there's just a lot of boxes you have to go through. There's not a bunch of loose loot. And given that I had less than five minutes, yeah, I wasn't missing this extract. We're pulling up on the big terror group building and I don't go inside the terror group building or the winery just simply because I ran out of time on this raid. But the things to know about the terror group building, there are seven PMC lootable bodies physically inside the building, three towards the garage, one in the rubble, two in the lobby, and one in the upstairs offices. And there are a ton of them in the front yard. I'm going to give you all a little map of where they all are just so you don't miss any. They are fantastic for loot, I'm telling you. And as far as the winery goes, which is directly across the street from the Terror Group building, there are a bunch of shelves like the bar that we were in earlier in the video. Liquor bottles can spawn on those shelves as well, so be sure to check all of them. There's about four times as many shelves, so that's four times more opportunity for liquor. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we made it to Emercom Checkpoint, our exfil, and are out of raid. And that piece of sugar at the end? Yeah, I missed it. No, I didn't know I was extracting. God! So that'd have been an extra 100k or so on top of this. Oh well, you snooze, you lose, Scobo. Damn it. But after selling what we needed to sell to traders and then selling what we needed to sell to flee, we made a doggone total of 1,164,475 rubles. Holy shit. That's a whole lot of money, partner. Mm, let's go! And here are the numbers for the other nine runs that I did. And if my redneck arithmetic is correct, that would give us a total average rubles made running ground zero being 758,067.6. We're gonna round that to 68 rubles. That's good money. That's doggone good money. And that one run where I died, that really skewed the results. However, that is Tarkov. Sometimes you just get malwowed. By the way, let me show you the lovely way that that happened. Let's go on outside. Ooh. Is that a PM? It is. Well, I popped him a few times. Any bets on accuracy being 100 out of 100? Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Woo! Let's just ease on up in here. Hey, buddy, be careful. This guy, he's murdering. He's been murdering everybody. I got it! You stupid bastard! Son of a bitch! 